The Russian Defense Ministry reported continued progress in its special military operation, with Defense Minister Andrei Belousov holding key discussions with commanders at the forefront of the conflict. During a visit to the command post of the Center Group of Troops, Defense Minister Andrei Belousov was briefed by Colonel General Andrei Mordvichev on ongoing operations. Mordvichev detailed the deployment of Russian aviation, artillery, and unmanned aerial vehicles in their area of responsibility. Russian air defense systems were credited with a series of critical interceptions. A Pantsir S-1 air defense system successfully shot down an Ukrainian UAV in the Kursk region, demonstrating Russia's robust airspace surveillance. The Pantsir S-1 remains a pivotal component of Russian air defense with its 12 anti-aircraft missiles and double-barreled 30 mm cannons. Additionally, a Buk M-3 air defense missile system crew operating in the Avdivka direction intercepted and destroyed Storm Shadow and 8 ACMS cruise missiles launched by Ukrainian forces. Following a brief award ceremony, artillerymen from the West Group of Troops promptly resumed their positions on the battlefield. These troops, recognized for their courage, received medals such as for bravery and extraordinary military ranks. Among the awarded were crews operating the 152 mt towed Gyatsint B guns, known for their effectiveness in destroying Ukrainian armored vehicles and manpower. Russian military sources report significant Ukrainian losses across multiple fronts. In the Lipsy and Volchansk directions, Russian forces inflicted substantial damage on Ukrainian brigades, with up to 95 Ukrainian servicemen lost, alongside combat armored vehicles and ammunition depots destroyed. In Kharkiv, Russian units took control of the village of Vishnevo and repelled counterattacks by Ukrainian assault groups. The Ukrainian losses were severe, with 410 servicemen, five vehicles, and numerous artillery systems, including US and UK made howitzers neutralized. In the southern region, Russian forces gained advantageous positions while defeating several Ukrainian brigades near key locations, such as Razliv, Konstantinovka, and Fedorovka. Ukrainian forces attempting to launch counterattacks were repelled. Russian sources reported Ukrainian casualties of up to 900 servicemen and the destruction of artillery systems, including US-made M777 howitzers. Further advances were made by the center group of forces who captured the settlement of Krutoy Yar in the Donetsk People's Republic. Ukrainian losses in the region were significant, with 635 servicemen killed and a variety of military equipment destroyed. Russian President Vladimir Putin marked the second anniversary of Russia, laying claim to four annexed regions in Ukraine with a recorded address on Monday. We did not abandon our brothers and sisters. We tried to achieve a peaceful resolution to the gravest conflict. You know how these negotiations ended, with lies, forgery and deception on the part of the Western elites, who during this time turned Ukraine into their colony, into a military bridgehead aimed at Russia. He accused the West of turning Ukraine into a military bridgehead aimed at Russia and said Russia was trying to solve the conflict peacefully. Not only Donbas, but also Crimea and other Russian regions were designated as targets. Further developments fully confirm the necessity and validity of the special military operation, its truly liberating nature. Fighting now in Donbas and Novorossiya, defending the kursk belgorod bryansk borders, they are defending the entire vast, beautiful, beloved Russia. We are proud of our heroes. Russian air defense systems were highly active, intercepting several high-profile Ukrainian strikes. Over the course of recent operations, three US-made ATACM's operational tactical missiles, HIMARS rockets, and numerous unmanned aerial vehicles were successfully shot down. 
marking Ground Forces Day, Russian President Vladimir Putin extended his congratulations to the personnel and veterans of the Russian Ground Forces. In a statement, Putin highlighted the historic legacy of the Ground Forces, acknowledging their continued role in defending Russia's national interests and sovereignty. He expressed confidence in their future operations, emphasizing that they will remain steadfast in safeguarding the country's borders. As Russian forces continue their operations, the Ministry of Defense provided a summary of their progress. Tactical aviation, UAVs, missile forces and artillery units have been conducting strikes against Ukrainian concentrations across 128 areas. Since the start of the special military operation, Russia claims to have destroyed over 32,500 Ukrainian UAVs, 18,400 tanks and other armoured combat vehicles alongside thousands of artillery pieces. These developments mark another phase in the intensifying conflict, with Russia positioning its military to maintain a dominant stance across multiple operational fronts.